So there are many ways to level up your classes in Elden Ring. Whenever I start a new one, I always like doing a few runs here and there just to boost up my character and get ready for some of the tougher challenges. Normally, I'm against just farming mindlessly just to get like higher levels, which makes no sense. But there's some early tips and tricks that I can show you and early zones that you can definitely use to get more runes and at the same time also get better stats for the challenges ahead. Now, there's plenty of popular spots out there but personally the one that is my favorite since it's so early in the game is this one right next to the Warmaster shack very close to the starting area essentially this entire cliffside just south of that shack is filled with things to collect that will give you a ton of runes that you can then invest into your character to boost up your stats and level it up of course the two things we will mainly focus on are going to be the ruin fragments and obviously these oversized enemies that when killed will provide about 1000 runes each time. Now if you just started things out, chances are you're not gonna be able to take these enemies down reliably, which is why in the meantime I first recommend starting with the ruin fragments. What I like doing is to begin the process from the eastern part of the cliff right here from one of these buildings, just pay close attention to the white shiny things on the ground because that's essentially what you will be collecting. There's a few such places in this area and even like a graveyard that has even higher quality fragments right behind the shack so also make sure that you run that and make your way progressively towards the western part of the cliff ignoring all enemies for now and collecting everything you see in any of these rundown structures and once you're done you can pretty much go ahead and sell them the first run should be the most productive which is at least 10,000 runes if you sell all of those fragments at any nearby vendor the cool thing about this is that they also replenish so that you can go ahead and with the exception maybe of the graveyard recollect everything and and make some extra on top. Now eventually this should give you enough to invest some points into your character, point at which you can go ahead and start thinking about farming the enemies instead, or maybe even both the fragments and the enemies at the same time. Now taking down these enemies will be dependent on your class, with obviously ranged characters and specifically magic classes having a huge advantage over here because you can just sit on horseback and spam your spells from the distance and even like stagger the enemy which makes them an easy target but most important is the fact that upon defeating them they fully replenish your flasks including the ones that give you that much needed mana so this means you can spam your spells and then consume the flask because it's going to pretty much regenerate upon the enemy's death rinse and repeat and this is how a typical run looks like for me on my mage class that i'm farming with right now of course it's a strong class and if you want the same staff and ability i covered all of that in a video that i posted earlier today so definitely check that out with the meteorite yeah staff and the gravity ability but otherwise once you're done with that you might want to like change to something else and there are some alternatives which might or might not be better for you depending on your class and that's gonna be through this third church of Maurica right here on this side of the map also quite close to the starting area a little bit further away though but once you reach this location just make your way behind the church right here between these bushes onto like the water area because here you will find something like a portal that will bring you to a different part of the map very far away and on that note I will give a huge shout out to power pigs because they were the first one to discover this and also post it online so it was definitely a very helpful spot now this one is going to be a bit more dangerous because these enemies even though small can one shot you pretty much no matter how much hp you might have they can literally one shot you with one of their abilities doesn't mean it's going to happen but there's a huge chance it will happen if you stay too close to them which is why in this case you might want to get an item or a weapon that can either interrupt them or stagger them in this case a heavy melee weapon or just like a super powerful glint attack could definitely work wonders now there's about 15 or 20 of these enemies in this area which means you get a huge boost per run assuming that you can take them down reliably and not dying in the process which again could be a bit more complicated there's also another downside to this area which is why i kind of avoid it which is the fact that yeah these enemies do not replenish your flasks upon death but then again if you're playing as a melee character or somebody who does not rely on that you can simply farm them without any worry at the same time if you are playing with a spellcaster and do worry about your mana regen you can simply just fast 
travel back to that third church again, replenish at the side of grace and then use the teleporter to come back, rinse and repeat once more. In both of these situations we're talking about tens of thousands of runes in just like 10 to 20 minutes, possibly a little bit more if you have a good character with the second farming method but the first one is also a little bit more safe and it constantly replenishes, so again it's a matter of preference. Now moving on to the next farm, let's talk about upgrading your gear and specifically the most important is going to be your weapons, especially for melee oriented characters but also spellcasters that add melee in the mix. And for that you will need quite a lot of smithing stones that you can find in certain areas but the best one early on is by far the Limgrave tunnels right here just north side of the main lake really close to the starting area. Of course this is going to be a little bit dangerous but you can obviously just like assassinate most of the enemies or take them down super easily and they have a high chance to drop at least one of these smithing stones. There are a few more rewards in the same area and also a boss that gives you a nice item but just like unlock the set of grace over there and once you're done teleport back, reset the fights and refarm just the enemies that are on like closest to the surface level as they will suffice. Going any deeper might like just kill you or you might encounter enemies that are a bit too strong for you or just get overrun so stick with those, reset the fights and it shouldn't take you too long to get at least like 10 to maybe 20 which is enough to upgrade at least a couple of weapons. And this brings us to the final point and that's gonna be about upgrading your flasks. As I've talked about previously there's quite a lot of upgrades and tiers that you can find early on in the game. Well actually there are a couple of zones that contain about up to 8 total upgrades just for your flasks from regular tiers all the way up to some that give you new bonus effects. The first two you likely already encountered at the church I was talking about previously including a crimson crystal one that heals you all the way up to half HP when you mix it up with the mixology skill but also the sacred tier that you will want to get in the same area. Then after that you will want to head over south of that really close to this tree right here because on both of the sides of it you're going to get a spike cracked tier and a second one called green spill crystal tier which will both give you some really interesting effects and again you can mix them up to create some really powerful potions that don't just heal but provide other bonuses. At the same time just head over a little bit south of this to the castle at the same location which is going to give you access to a golden seed and from this point on there's three more gold seeds and the fourth one with this one that you will definitely make use of to further increase the amount of flasks that you can get. So after this head over to the Weeping Peninsula and as I've said in the previous video just go to these three church areas on this side of the map. The first two are gonna be located onto like the north and the western part of the map right here. Meanwhile the third one will be located on a cliff side on the way towards the main castle in the peninsula so also make sure you grab that. And between all of these this means at least three new flasks including two regular ones and at least one of these that is part of the mixology and of course also because of that sacred tier you can boost them up and make them way more powerful. And this is pretty much it with the best early farms. Of course if there's any other location that you are using right now let me know down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.